I'm Jared Bunch from Intermountain Medical Center in Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm here in Boston at the Heart Rhythm Scientific Sessions and here to discuss a trial with uh, Dr. Doug Packer from the Mayo Clinic hey, Jared. and also um, my mentor when I was there at, Ment at Mayo Clinic as well about a pivotal trial that's probably the most influential trial in our field over the past three decades and really a testament to Dr. Packer's vision. And this trial was Cabana. And if you could please tell us what the premise of Cabana was about. You and I have treated a lot of patients that have atrial fibrillation, and I think the one thing that we've learned from them is they don't like it. <clears throat> they have excessive symptoms. Uh, those can range anywhere from fish flopping in their chest to, to other palpitations or to shortness of breath or um, inability to exercise. There have been a number of studies that have looked at the best way to treat that kind of symptom complex. The problem with it is that those studies have been fairly small. They really haven't got at the big picture items like um, stroke, heart attacks, mortality. And they haven't really taught us much about patients who had substantial underlying disease. So with Cabana, what we wanted to do is we wanted to get at those big picture issues. We wanted to get at those, and we wanted to have a trial that was a randomized clinical trial, and that with that randomization, we would be able to tell something about patients who are ablated versus patients who are drug treated and actually know that the data are close to being real. And I think this is critical because ablation or where we cauterize small parts of the heart where atrial fibrillation develops um, is really becoming a widely used technique and approach. And we've had medicines for a long time, so we had to understand the role of a new approach. And is it, is it a value? Should we use it earlier? Should we, does it have durable benefits? And I think this trial gets a lot at that. So when you look at the results of Cabana, what do they tell you? What do they speak to you if you're to tell a patient that sees you in the office has atrial fibrillation, what is it, how does it speak to you? I think Cabana tells us two or three things. Uh, on the one hand, there are some things that it doesn't tell us, and on the other hand, there's some things that it clearly tells us. I don't think that Cabana tells us that we can do an ablation and make people live longer, unless they're in certain populations. You know, the, the early information that we're culling through right now, um, patients who maybe are a little bit long, younger, and patients who have heart failure or congestive heart failure, or have jazz vast score that, scores that are high. Those patients, if we look at mortality and we look at cardiovascular hospitalization, it looks like, from Cabana, that ablation actually does something. It actually has a benefit. It actually reduces the risk. Cabana certainly tells us that ablation is effective and that it will reduce the occurrence of atrial fibrillation something on the order of 30 to 40 percent. And I think it does a pretty good job of telling us about the safety of atrial fibrillation. Now, doesn't mean that everybody who has an ablation is going to go through it scot-free without some kind of a complication because complications will occur. But I don't think you can look at one complication and with a broad brush stroke, paint all of ablation with that brush. Same thing with drugs. <clears throat> there are some patients that are going to have some kind of a, a side effect from a drug. It doesn't mean drugs are bad. It just means that there are specific patients with specific issues. And I think Caban has done more to tease out what those issues are and make a decision for us about what we should be recommending. Yeah, absolutely. And I, to me, one of the most interesting parts was the younger patients tended to do better. So perhaps we should be offering this therapy earlier to younger patients, or is it, would you look at it as a case-by-case basis? I think we need to figure that out. Um, we haven't had the data for long enough to completely go through that. <clears throat> I think you and I, though, both agree that if a patient's younger, they're going to tolerate it better and they're more likely to be paroxysmal, which is easier to ablate. If you're looking at somebody who's older who's been in atrial fibrillation for 10 years, 
I'm not sure we're going to benefit them a lot. Yeah, I think that's how my practice as well. And now you've looked at Cabana and it's been 20 years at least. And um, what's the next step? What's the next trial that needs to be done? Hmm. Before we do any other trials, we need to finish Cabana. <laughs> we, still, we still have probably 150 papers to write. And so I think we need to get information about that. But since you ask, uh, one of the things that we're doing is we're working with carbon particle and proton beam ablation. So we're doing ablations now without catheters. <clears throat> and we're taking a linear accelerator and with the linear accelerator, we're speeding up protons and carbon beams to the speed of light and then ablating through the chest. So that's the next big thing. And for those that may not know, this is the ability to, to treat the heart from outside. And mo a lot of the complications for Cabana are related to having instruments in the heart, in the yeah. veins. So it, that would be a complete <clears throat> new way of treating something that would, you could go home the same day and do, do accomplishing the same goals, so that would be exciting. It's the difference between a 40-minute ablation and an eight-hour ablation. And I think operators and patients alike would, would like the shorter procedure. Yeah. So, well, I really appreciate your time and, and your vision on this trial um, from somebody that will benefit from it. It's, it's really greatly appreciated. And, and I'm looking forward to being part of a lot of those next steps and those next questions as this database comes out. Intermountain was heavily involved. We believed in it. We believed in the, the leadership of the trial and, and the people of Utah were also very willing to contribute and we're appreciative to them as well because I think we will we'll all benefit in the answers. I think you get the yellow jersey for the U.S. <laughs> Only second to Russia. They were a little too quick. Well, but they'll get the yellow jersey for Russia, <clears throat> and you'll get it for the Tour de France of Salt Lake City. Perfect. We'll take it. Okay. Thank you very much.